Jeff Gibbons here with another virtual instrument video. And in this one, I'm gonna do a little bit of a review and a deep dive into Native Instruments' newest virtual instrument called Lo-Fi Glow. This one was made by MSX Audio. I'll show you some of the more in-depth details of this virtual instrument. There's a lot of stuff under the hood, so I'll dig right into that after I show you some patches and show you it in action with a couple of little beats that I made over the last couple days here. So yesterday I got the Faded Reels expansion pack, which was also made by MSX Audio. And these two libraries are meant to sort of work together. So what I've done is I've taken some of the beats that I made in machine and used in my faded reels expansion review which i'll put a link to in the description i went through it and reassigned some of the the instrument tracks and used some of the patches from lo-fi glow when you're looking for patches for lo-fi glow when you first make the virtual instrument all you're going to get in this contact window is the instruments you're just going to see the lo-fi glow uh, NKI. So you just drag that in and then to find your patches you go right over here. Of course you could do the same thing on machine. So if you were to load up a new group I could go over to the browser and then I go to my instruments tab and then there is lo-fi glow right there and then we can search we can search through patches like we normally do on machine. We could also do the same thing on complete control. So if I go over here, press the browser button, then of course I see Lo-Fi Glow as my instruments and I can go through the patches just like normal. So of course I can go through to the different categories and I can go to mallet instruments and see the different, the different instruments that they've got in there. Let's leave it on that one just for a second and I'm just gonna load up a patch. I'm just gonna click right on the, the 4D encoder there. So here's what you get when you first load up Lo-Fi Glow. Two different sources for sounds. You can sort of think of it like two oscillators and you can load up these samples or waveforms or wavetables and then you can mix between them with the different controls. So we'll get into that in a second. But of course you can make your own patches right here by just clicking on the first slot and I can go through and choose any one of these little sound sources right here. And then some of the basic controls that you have on the front of Lo-Fi Glow, you have a balance. And then we've got our macro knobs down at the bottom. We've got six macro knobs. We've got balance and volume. And those are kind of the default ones on the left and the right. And the balance is just going to switch between these two different layers. So if I have the balance all the way to the left and go all the way to the right, you can hear that we've got just some crackly stuff happening there. Once you're in here, if you don't want to use the browser on your devices, you can just click this drop down menu right here, go to factory, and then you can go through the different patches this way. Let's just look at the sounds that we've got available. We've got a bunch of bass patches, effects patches, keys, leads, mallets, organs, pads, and plucks. The thing that I'm going to show you later is that this device really starts to shine when you start making your own patches. So we'll dig into that later on in the video, but let's just go through and try some of these patches out. I'm going to go to my base group and then what I'll do is I will just cycle through some of these patches. So a lot of really dirty bass sounds and that's what they say about this one. This, this library is not a clean library but the cool thing is uh, most of them have some kind of noise applied to them and you can then dial the noise back. I like to find the patches, refine the noise on these and then make sure I don't have too much building up on different layers. So let's have a look at some of these effects ones. So even some of these effects patches are pitched. And let's have a look at some of the other patches. We'll go over to the leads. Try a couple of these.
That's a nice lead. So you get the idea. We've got leads. We've got some neat plucky sounds, which I played a couple of already. The mallets go nicely with that as well. I'll show you some of those in context of a little song. So let's go through and just show you the little ideas that I've made. So again, this is my little neighbor kit with a dusty bass. Load up another one. This is the llama kit that I made for Faded Reels. Has some really cool percussion sounds. Let's have a listen to this one. I really like this one. This might be my favorite little beat that I've made here. This one has a bunch of lo-fi glow patches in it. So we can see the faded reels kits over here. We've got this one done bass. Let's have a look at that one. The next thing I've got from lo-fi glow in here is this pad. Really nice pad sound. And then let's look at this plucked one that I've got in there. And that one is actually just this plucked poly patch. And then what I did with that one is I turned the sequencer on and made a little sequence here. So when I hold down a key, And what I did is I set the key to C minor. So no matter what I play, it's going to keep the notes, regardless of where the intervals on my sequencer are, it's going to round them off to a note in C minor. Once you play around with it a bit, you realize how cool this could actually be, especially on something like Machine, where it's a little harder to play notes. So you use this little sequencer, you can just And it's just going to keep playing correct notes in the key that you're in. Let's listen to it one more time. So that gives you an idea of some of the sounds in Lo-Fi Glow and goes perfectly with the Faded Reels expansion pack. What I want to do now is show you the details of the virtual instrument. So first let's click on the one that says sound and in here we're going to find this A and B layers. In order to turn the layers off, all you have to do is hit the power button for the layer and that will just completely disable it. If I click this little lock symbol right here and change one of them, you'll see that now it's changing both of them. If I turn it off and make a change, now you can see that the other one stays where it was. So let's put the lock symbol on. We'll put it back to uh, zero. So here we can choose the actual sound source. So we can click the little magnifying glass and get to all of the different sound sources. Some of them are waveforms and wavetables. So then you look at the next options. We've got things like this little keyboard mode. And if you click this little button, then that layer is not going to have pitches. If you're using something like noise, uh, say like some record crackle, and you didn't want the record crackle layer to be pitched as it goes up and down the keyboard. If you put this keyboard tracking on, of course it's gonna change pitch. We've got the transpose button. That These ones are obvious, change up by semitones. Next we've got pan. So you could pan one and take the other one. Now this one, because I'm changing both of them at the same time, I have to turn that off to pan the other one to the left. We've got the volume, the relative volume of each of them. Of course, you'd want to change those independently with the lock off. So you can turn the lock on and off as you're changing parameters and whether you want them to be on both of them or to be separate. Next, we've got this noise section. And if I turn that on, we are going to be adding a bunch of different types of noise. So the first one is reduce. This one simulates the reduction of sample frequency. So it takes us from like 48 kilohertz we've got and resamples it down to all the way down to 50 hertz, which just sounds great. Next, we've got crush, which is like a bit crusher. So we can crush it down to one bit. Oh yeah, that sounds good too. We've got noise. 
And then we've got the color of the noise as well, which we can adjust with this parameter right here. Now, if I go to the filter section, we can see we have a choice of a whole bunch of filters. We could choose something like a low pass filter. We've got cutoff, we've got resonance. And if these controls are new to you, just make sure you go check out my video on synthesis, because I do a video on synthesis where I use hardware synthesizers and some software and just go over these different sections like the filters and the envelopes and the LFO. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Make sure you go watch that video. Key track is when the filter opens up as you move up the keyboard. So things get brighter as you move up. We've also got the LFO section, all of these modulators that we've got built in here. All you have to do is click on the modulator you want to work with. So say LFO. Okay, I'm going to use uh, layer B here for this little demo and I'll show you what the LFO does. So we go to the LFO and I can choose the waveform just by clicking and dragging and you can see some different types. We've got some pulse width and all of the basic waveforms in there to control our LFO. Let's leave it on sine wave for a second and then I'm going to crank the rate up and then I'm going to apply this. You can see where we can apply it just with these little sliders. Those are the only things we can apply each of these parameters to. So you'll see they're a little bit different depending on the modulator. But if I go click on LFO1, I can see I can now modulate the pitch with LFO1. Now let's take the rate down. And now it's doing a perfect sine wave LFO to the tuning of layer B and layer A, of course because I've got them locked, but let's take this back down. And if you command click on any of these parameters, they'll reset back to zero. I could also do panning on this one. Let's take this up the octave. Let's crank that up. Now it's going left and right. And then of course, if you click this little music note, we can now do this to the tempo of your song. So quarter notes, eighth notes, etc., cetera, 16th notes, back and forth. And then RT stands for retrigger, and that just means it will, every time you hit the note, the cycle will start over again. And then with retrigger on, you could do this fade in thing, and you can go up to 10 seconds with this one, but we can have it take a while to get there. So you can hear it takes a few seconds, and then the vibrato kicks in. We could do that on my old Juno 6. So let's turn that right off, turn the retrigger off, and then we've got another LFO, which we can apply to other parameters as well. And then the good thing about knowing all of this information is when you load up a lo-fi glow patch, there might be some aspect of it that you're like, you know what, I love this patch, but I don't like that thing, that wobble or whatever. And now you can go through, you can click through the different modulators, see where things are assigned to it, and then try playing with that parameter and tweaking it so that it becomes something that fits what you want in your songs. So that's LFOs and then we've got the envelopes, modulation envelope. This one we can apply to a filter. I could just go modulation envelope, apply that to the filter. Let's crank up the filter. Now we can hear this slow attack on the filter. It gives you control over the attack so you can have it kind of be logarithmic or linear. And so this is the opposite logarithmic. Goes up really fast and then tapers off. Or you can just have it a straight line. Now let's set it really fast again. Now let's try the amplitude envelope. So of course we can change the attack of the instrument. Next, we're going to look at the effects section. We can reorder the effects. We've got a bunch we can choose. We can have an EQ for A and B. So regular parametric EQ on each of these layers. Next, we've got the effects section. And here we can click to the drop down and see all of the basic contact effects. Let's go to um, like a phaser. Crank up the speed. And then we can take this phaser and move it over here so it happens before an effect like a compressor or something like that if you wanted to. So all sorts of different effects that you can check on there. I won't go over those, but those are fairly self-explanatory. You click on each one and then you get a drop down with controls for that. Let's turn that off. Next we've got the sequencer 
And this one is one that I was quite excited about when I went and made this little patch right here. So let me pull up that one, this Plucked Poly, and, and let me show you what I did on that one. Double click Lo-Fi Glow. Down below we have Velocity. So if I go like this with Velocity, all I'm going to get is one pitch every 16 values. And then as I add, And then this right here controls pitch. So if I click right here, I can take this up to an octave. Let's go, um, let's go one octave and that's it. Now, when I'm doing this, I have this scale set on already. And when you first start this, it's not going to be set to a scale. So what I'll do is I'll just turn this off so we can really hear what's happening with the pitches. So it was rounding those pitches off to something that fit in the key of C minor. But what I would normally do is start with actual pitches that you want in the key of C. So I don't want that one. I probably want the fifth right there. And then this one here, probably a minor six. There we go. And then this one, probably uh, something like a fourth. Let's go an octave and a fourth. And then an octave and a fifth. There we go. Okay, so that's starting to make sense, but now let's continue on with the scale discussion here. I'm going to change this root key to D. So now it's the root key is D, and I'm going to set the scale to D minor. Maybe I'll go to my balance and just get rid of that crackly sound for now. Okay, this is sounding pretty good. Go down the octave. Now watch what happens if I play an E. You can hear that some of the intervals aren't what they are listed as, and that's because it's rounding them off to the closest note in the key of D minor. Here we can choose the rate. So I can make this now eighth note, so it's going to be a lot slower. Or I can make it 30 seconds, make it a lot faster. And then re-trigger means it's going to start from scratch every time I play a new note. And if I take that off, it's going to continue on the cycle even if I change notes on the keyboard. All right, so we've got the rate, we've got swing. I can crank up the swing if I want more swing in my song, or if my song is swung. First step just means it starts right from the beginning. And then over on the right hand side, we've got layer routing. So we can turn it right off right here and just go back to a regular synthesizer. Or you could just turn the sequencer right off with the power button. And then next we've got how many steps do you actually have? You can have up to 16. So we have eight up to 16. We can choose the direction and then gate just means it's gonna be shorter clipped notes. So let's try that. So really percussive versus long notes. All right, so that is the pitch and velocity and the sequencer. Then the sequencer stuff that we talked about here can also apply to other parameters like your macros. And then with these macros, what you can do is you can choose to have things go on very intensely and then off and all sort of things in between. So you could use this for a filter. If one of your macros was a filter, you could go in and automate that in this little sequencer as well. So let's turn the sequencer off and go over to the macros themselves. And here we can see the different macros. You can have six, up to six here, which will then show up on your keyboard and also show up the bottom right here. And to change macros, all you have to do is click that little button. It'll start to flash. And then I can go over to the first window and I can apply this knob right here to this first macro. So I can click cut off and now you can see I can, how I can assign it. I can say, well, I'll just adjust it from this point to this point. If I crank the knob all the way to the left, to the right, these are my left and right points basically right there. Or do you want it to be the whole way? So now this knob right here, delay, is going to control filter cutoff. 
but it's also controlling delay. So let's go figure out what this macro is assigned to. I click on the macros again, and I can see delay here is now controlling delay wet level and layer A cutoff. Well, I can decide at this point to say, you know what, I don't want this one, let's just turn that one off. And now I've got it just assigned to the cutoff. And then what I can do is just go rename this. So I'm just going to click right down here at the bottom and just call that cut off yo. And then it'll show up on my keyboard. And if I click on something like phaser, this whole sequencer looking thing gives you a way to choose if you turn the knob, does it go in a linear fashion? Does it jump up and down all over the place? I can draw something in and then go like this, maybe something like that. So now when I turn the knob, it's only once I get to the very end of this knob, of this phaser knob, that things will really start to kick in. So watch what happens as I adjust the knob. You see it's cycling through that parameter right there. So it gives you some really refined control over how these knobs behave. We can choose the minimum and maximum for each one of these. So you can see them change as I click between them. And then you can see down at the bottom how we can assign each macro. We can have a whole bunch of different controls assigned to each macro. You can also reorganize them if you want to have certain ones at a certain spot. And then we go over to the gear icon. We're on the settings window for Lo-Fi Glow. And here we can see the two different layers. So here we can play with the velocity curves. So you can see how if I crank it to the left, we get a logarithmic going up as you hit the keys harder and then the opposite, so more dramatic as you start getting louder, but then taper off as you get to the higher velocities. Here we can see a couple of controls for setting a monophonic patch. So right now I can play a chord, put on monophonic, and it's not going to let me play a chord. Let's look at the next one. We've got the low key and the high key, so you can actually set splits up between these two voices. So you could have one down in the low notes, one up at the high notes, and just change those right here. We've got the pitch bend up and down. So I could make that a whole octave if I want to. And then we've got the glide as well, so I can do portamento. I think, honestly, that's probably enough for this virtual instrument. I probably went into more detail than I wanted to. But you know what? I read through the manual and I was like, if I hadn't done this, I would have just opened up this virtual instrument and probably missed out on a whole lot of sound design features that they have built into it. It's not an expensive synth, but it comes with all the features of an expensive synth. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful for you and what it's going to do also is help you with the other Play Series virtual instruments where you can go in and start to see what they're doing under the hood as well. So click on the subscribe button and the bell and make sure you watch my video on faded reels. We'll see you in the next video.